Yeah. What did you think at this time when you were receiving these text messages? I thought these two are crazy. They deserve each other. Okay. And um, you don't respond until about 4.33 in the morning. Right. What are you doing between 2.44 and 4.33? So uh, Ray had come over and he said, I give me the address. I'm going over there. Or you're gonna, we're going to call the police and they're going over there. And he's like, look at your face. And I'm like, yeah, but, you know, this is what it is. And I kind of like pushed it off for a little bit. But then he, he picked up the phone and called the police. And I honestly didn't know her address off the top of my head. I had to Google map it on a computer and get to a satellite view and then find the street and then give him the address that way. So I did over the phone. He's got it on speaker. Um, and then the police get dispatched, they come to my office, my shop. Okay. And at that time, you know, they're telling me that they had gotten reports and uh, that, you know, she was out there, got picked up. And so then I'm like, huh. So I, I decided to text her, are you okay? You know? So when, by the, when the police arrive at Web Squad, yeah. you're starting to wonder... I'm starting to wonder, like, what, what's real? What's, what really happened? You know, you start to really slow down and piece things together now that you're not in such a adrenaline mode and start to think a little clearer. And um, then I receive a communication back immediately from her phone. And when I saw the communication back, I'm like, yeah, that's not her. And why do you think that was not her? Because... If you look at all of our communications from June 7th from when we met to August 7th, which is exactly two months, everything, usually, whenever she says or replies to anything, it's spelled out correctly. Um, this was not spelled out correctly. She'd correct my grammar constantly. You know, if I say your, she'd reply with you apostrophe R-E. It's just like a going on, ongoing joke between us, you know. So... When I saw that, I, I realized, yeah, I don't think this is her, so I asked her to call me. Okay. And then I'll show you Exhibit 92 here. Uh, this continues on in that conversation. Are you okay? Yeah, are you? Then you asked her another question. Yeah. So I'm like, yeah, are you? I've never seen that come back from her. She'll always spell things out. And I said, did he hurt you? She, she replies with this, meaning he left, no, yelled. And I've never received short answers like that from her before. Okay. Like one word. So I'm like, okay, well, that's, let's settle this. If you're okay and he left, you call me so I can hear your voice that you're okay. Did she ever call you no. that night? Did the conversation continue on momentarily after that? Yeah. And what was her response when you texted, or I guess the phone's response, when you texted, please give me a call. I'd just like to hear that you are okay. Yeah, then I get this back. Uh, are you okay? Like... Us talking is what caused this. I'm sorry. So, yeah, I'm like, no, this is not her. Okay. In my mind, I'm thinking, I don't think this is her. Okay. So, um, did you receive any phone calls at that time? Yeah. So then I received a phone call from the defendant from his phone, my phone. And at the time, I was standing in the middle of the web squad with two uh, uniformed police officers and my two friends. And so I put him on speakerphone for all four of us, to, or five of us, to listen to and, and speak with. And tell me about that conversation. He, he, uh, he's, he asks me if I'm okay, and I said, what do you mean I'm okay? Like, you just beat my face in. I'm trying to determine whether I need to go to the hospital or not. You know, and he's like, oh, this is, this is effed up. You know, I don't think that you're fault. I don't think you knew, but this, oh, man, this is effed up. And I'm like, well, what do you want from me? Like, you want to you want to know me? Do you want to meet me? Come over here. Because officers were like, yeah, see if you'll come over here. Are they whispering that to you or are they saying it all? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And so I, I asked if you want to come over here and, and hung up. Okay. Was that the last uh, interaction you had with the defendant? Correct. Okay. Um, did the defendant ever come over to Web Squad? No. I apologize. Um, after you have this conversation uh, with the defendant on the phone, um, what happened? So the officer said that Christy was picked up and taken to Sunrise, and uh, they 
the officers and my friends all agreed that I needed to go to the hospital and be seen by a professional. So um, I went. Uh, one of my friends drove me, and then they checked me into a room next door to her room, and I laid down in one of the beds, and they started to treat me with an IV and uh, the things that they do. And uh, another uniformed police officer, a, a female, she came in and she recorded the statement from me that I give her as her handwriting because she wrote it. Okay. So you orally told her a right. summary of what happened and then she actually physically wrote it. Yeah, I was laying in bed while they were doctors were trying to do things to me as well. Okay. Um, which hospital was it that you went to? Sunrise. And um, so tell me about it, uh, the injuries that you sustained. Um, a dislocated shoulder, a bite to the face and arm, um, broken nose. <clears throat> Initially, the doctor, when they saw me, they said, we're going to have to do a, a scan of your head because it looks like your orbital sockets are, are blown apart. But uh, I was lucky because I had strong bones, and they weren't. Okay. Uh, but my face and my entire head, side of my head, forehead, and everything was so swollen, I had concussion. Okay. Um, the, how long were you in the hospital for? I didn't stay too long, maybe six hours, five, six hours. Uh, do you know where Christy was at during the, your time? Yeah, she was in the room right next to my room. Were you ever able to um, go speak to her while she was in the hospital? Yeah, so about an hour after I got processed in bed, a statement was taken, then um, I went next door and to see her for the first time. And, and uh, she was in bed, and her, her eyes looked like they were peppered shut, just like beaten, and teeth gone. And it was the saddest thing I could see. You know, and as soon as I walked in, she was just laying there, and, and I walked in, and she just started apologizing, like, ten times. I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry, and over and over and over, and so. Okay. Um, did you notice whether or not uh, anything had happened to her hair? Yeah, it had been cut up. A lot of hair was, up. hair was missing, and she had uh, some scar, like blood uh, trails and cuts on her head. Okay. Did you ever talk to her then um, about her relationship with uh, Mr. Copenhaver at that time? Yeah, over the next three days in the hospital. You know, I stayed with her every day and night in the hospital. And just, uh, just a lot of times just the two of us in there. And so she just started explaining to me what had happened over the course of the relationship, you know, when they were in a relationship. Mm -hmm. And um, how it had started for one, the first, it was, it was a year long relationship. The first I'm going to object. This is hearsay. I'll move on. Sustained. Okay. The, um, after um, she was released from the hospital, where um, did you guys continue to see each other? Well, yeah. Um, I took care of her for the next month. Uh, the first two weeks, we stayed at my place. Um, I lived in a high-rise tower with a lot of security, and the defendant was still, you know, not apprehended. So um, there were a lot of people looking for him, and she didn't want to go home, and so it was best to just stay with me, even her mother agreed. Okay. Uh, so she stayed with you for about how long? Uh, the first two weeks straight okay. after she was released. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, I have a couple of the questions that um, I just kind of want to go in and uh, fill in a little bit here with a little bit more detail. Uh, your nose. You said it, your nose is broken. Do you have any lingering uh, effects from your nose being broken? Yeah, when I wake up in the morning, it's a little hard to breathe for a little while until I clear things out because one side is a lot smaller than the other. Okay. And um, do you still have the scar from the bite mark on your face? Yeah, right there. It's small. Okay. And what about a bark, bite mark on your arm? Is there still a scar there? A very light, small scar. Yeah. And it's on your right arm? Mm -hmm. Is that yes? Yes, right arm. Okay. And mm -hmm. what about... Don't try to well, that's correct. why I have to ask. What about your shoulder? Any lingering effects with your dislocated shoulder? Not now. It took about a year to heal, but uh, now I'm, I'm okay. 
how did that year, um, while it was healing, what things were you unable to do that you normally would be able to do? Work out of the gym, doing any kind of upper body, shoulder, chest, back exercises, um, pick things up that are heavy, sleep without pain. I mean, okay. Um, the defendant, as he sits here today in front of you, is he smaller now than he was um, on August, early morning hours of August 8th of 2014? Yeah, it looks like it. Um, the portion of the um, incident on August 8th where he's uh, threatening you, do you recall specifically what it was that he was saying to you? Yeah, that um, I'll kill you and your family if you snitch. My friends are Hells Angels and Navy Seals and I'll find you and your family. So is your impression that he would use the Navy Seals and or Hells Angels to kill you and your family? Yeah. Uh, did all of this occur in Clark County, Nevada? Yes. Okay. I'll pass the witness. Thank you, Ross. Thank you, Your Honor. Oh. One moment, Your Honor, before I pass it. Possibly. Okay. <coughs> Hang on. I want to run through just some of these uh, exhibits very quickly with you, okay? Sure. This is exhibit 124. It's uh, been admitted by stipulation, Your Honor. Okay. Uh, what are we looking at in exhibit 124? That's my face after the fight cleaned up at my web squad office. Okay. Taken by the police department. Exhibit 125, again, Your Honor, previously admitted. Side profile of my face after being <coughs> Exhibit 126. Side profile of my face. And this one has the ruler of the police officers. Mm -hmm. Is that yes? Yes, it does. Mm -hmm. Exhibit 127. Side profile of my face. What's uh, What are we looking at over here, kind of towards the left middle area? That's my ear. It's a little swollen from being hit. Exhibit 128. It's my forehead, uh, enlarged and swollen from being hit. Exhibit 129. Other side of my face. It's all the same photo sequence from the officers at my shop. Okay. Exhibit 132. That's the bite mark on my forearm. I'm getting it. All right. <laughs> Exhibit 133. Same form. Exhibit 134. Uh, that's just a, that's a raspberry from trying to be on my hands and knees on carpet. Okay. Exhibit 135. Form. 
Exhibit 136. That was uh, a day after we were admitted in the hospital, and um, I took that picture along with other pictures. Okay. We'll go through some of those. Exhibit 137. That was in the bathroom at the hospital. Um, all right. Exhibit 119. Yep, that's my face. Is that a photo at the hospital? Yes. No, oh, I'm sorry, that's uh, at my residence. Okay. That was a few days after the... It was meeting. a few days after the, yeah. Christy was still in the hospital at the time, and I was going home to change and shower. Okay. Exhibit 120. The state would move for its admission. I don't know if these will be actually been officially admitted. Mm -hmm. uh, right. The state would move for the admission of state's proposed exhibits 120 through 121. Or, sorry, 122. Any objection? There is not. They're admitted. Showing you exhibit 120. <clears throat> What are we looking at? That is uh, at the web squad. Police is this after that. you've been cleaned up? After I've been cleaned up before I went to the hospital. <clears throat> exhibit 121. Same, same time. And exhibit 122. Same time. Uh, exhibit 138, I believe this one's previously been admitted. Yes. What are we looking at here? That is about a week and a half after. Okay. And Your Honor, the state would move for the admission of state's proposed exhibits 146 through 152. Any objection? There is not. They're admitted. Show you exhibit 146. <clears throat> Are these photos taken? Uh, <clears throat> in the, uh, when you came for an interview with the district attorney's office? Yes. And what are we looking at here? Uh, the red, redness in my eyes. Okay. Exhibit 147, what are we looking at? Uh, my leg, right leg. Uh, what was going on with your right leg? Um, Is there I, a scratch I just here? believe I just had a, yeah, just from the moving around on the ground and the fight, you know, scratching my leg, but. Okay. Exhibit 148, what are we looking at? Uh, back of my tricep. And what is this here? In the middle of an injury to the tricep. I think it was from uh, hitting the black table at some point. Exhibit 149. More the, just the raspberry and you know, trying to crawl around on your arms and carpet and during the struggle. Were these photos taken several weeks after the actual um, beating? I believe so, yes. Exhibit 150. Mm -hmm. Forearm. Exhibit 151. Cheek. Okay. Is this the area of the yeah. bite? Uh -huh. It is. Say yes. Yes, it is. And exhibit 152. My other eye to see the redness in the eye. Uh, Your Honor, the um, parties both agreed that the is 911 call will be admitted under uh, 161. Is that correct, Counsel? It is. So that's admitted? Uh, Are you going to publish it? Yeah. Pardon? No. Yeah. yeah. So it's 161. 161. State room for its admission. Yes, it's admitted. Okay. okay. All right. The honor at this time, I will pass the witness. Okay. Promise. Good afternoon, Mr. Thomas. Good afternoon. How are you, sir? 
Very well, thank you. Your first contact with law enforcement in this case was at your business? Correct. And you said it was the web squad? Yes. What does the web squad do? We build websites, small business websites primarily for small business clients. Um, you said you had a partner? No, I don't have any partners in business. Who, when the police came, who was present at the web squad? Ray, one of my friends. Just Ray? Yes. All right. Uh, Greg, Ray and Greg. Greg, you got in there by now. All right. Who is Greg? Another uh, one of my friends. And it was Ray that called the police? Yes. How do you know Ray? We've been friends for years. We've worked out together at the gym. What is Ray's, um, let me ask it this way. With respect to fighting, what is Ray's background? Uh, he's an amateur boxer. And does he do any security work? Yes. And what's the nature of that security work? He's a private bodyguard. For? Floyd Mayweather. And I believe you're familiar with the term you used it in preliminary hearing, maxillofacial. Ma maxifacial. Maxifacial. Yeah. Okay. And what does that mean? It was some that he was studying for when he lived in Europe to become a maxifacial surgeon one day, but he didn't see through it. Was he actually a doctor, an MD in Europe? No. Okay. He just had some training. He was, yeah, he was studying for that. That was going to be his career path before he moved to the United States. And it was Ray that told you, you know, you have to go to the doctor for your face? I said, yeah. You gave a report and a statement to the police at Web Squad? I, took, I spoke to the police at the Web Squad. The actual report was uh, taken at the hospital. When I was in bed, I gave it orally to the penal officer. Okay. Um, let me ask you to, um, let, let me break it down a little bit. There was at some point a 911 call or a call to the police. Right. And that was made by Ray. And after... Is that yes? Yes, it is. Mm -hmm. and, and after kind of some doing, he, Ray, got you on the phone? So I was sitting next to him, and he called the police and started the phone conversation. And then when I was asking questions, he put it on speaker, and then I answered questions. Okay. You seem less than thrilled to be talking to the police. Is that a fair statement mm -hmm. at that time? You know, I, I <coughs> said what I wanted. I had agreed to what I said, and I, my word is something important to me. So, yeah, I was less than thrilled, and okay. it wasn't my, my intent. But, uh, you know, you're not always thinking in the right capacity at that time, and sometimes it takes someone who's not involved to shed a little light on the situation. Okay. So you gave sort of a sparse statement to the people at 911. They asked you a little bit for a little bit of information. Mm -hmm. And then... Yes? Yes, they asked me for information. Yes, I gave them information. Okay. Sorry, the mm -hmm just don't transcribe well, so I need to make sure the record's <laughs> clear. Correct. It's, uh, it's all right. Have you ever, uh, other than in connection with this case, have you ever uh, testified before? No. You okay? Yeah. Are you? I'm fine. <laughs> so I just, um, you know, sometimes people get nervous and they go back to saying, mm -hmm. so we'll take it slow. Um, at the scene, the police asked you some questions. Yes, they did. And they took a number of pictures. They took pictures of me. When you say at the scene, where are you talking about? I'm sorry, at Web Squad. <coughs> at the Web Squad, they took pictures of me, asked questions. Thank you, Your Honor. And then, how long was it that you were with the police at the web squad before you were transferred to the hospital? I'd say about 45 minutes. And you said you were transferred by your friend? My friend Greg. drove me, Greg. And how long was it that you had been in the <coughs> hospital? That, was it Officer Truax that interviewed you? Do you recall? I believe that is the lady's name, yes. And she made what you described as a written statement 
of what you told her? I was laying in the hospital bed, and she was asking the questions, and so I gave her a statement, spoke, and she wrote it down in her hand. And did you sign that statement? I did. How, how was your vision at that time? <clears throat> Perfect. How was your, I guess, perception after everything that had happened that night? In regards to what? How was your state of mind? How, was, how clear was your thinking? Well, when I got to the hospital, um, the doctor had said, you've got to have a CAT scan. It looks like your orbital sockets are blown out. You've got a lot of broken bones in your face. And I said, honestly, I don't, I don't feel that bad. Maybe it was the adrenaline that charged me up. But I said, I don't think anything's really broken. Maybe my nose. He scanned me. He said, you're right. I don't know how, but just your nose. And um, I said, yeah, I, I, maybe I just have a different pain tolerance. But I, they wanted to give me pain meds. I never ended up taking any pain meds through the entire duration of this. You stole my next question from me. Well, sorry about that. That's <laughs> no, all right. <clears throat> when you say you work at it at the gym with, with Ray, this is just regular lifting, machines, stuff like that? Yeah, free weight workout. You don't do any boxing training with him? No. Do you talk about it? No. Boxing fights? No, I'm not really into boxing. Now, you said you did some Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu? Yes. What, and I'm sorry, I didn't remember the name of the gentleman that you trained with. John Lewis. All right, and um, did you, you said you only did a little bit. Did you attain any belt? No, I didn't attain a belt ranking. Do you know your, your best, to, to the best of your ability, how many times, how many lessons, how many classes, of Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu jiu you did? Over the period of about two years, I'd say once a week, sometimes twice a week, maybe not, a, not during the week. So you could average around 50 for a year and maybe <coughs> 100 for two years. Okay. And sometimes you did two a week, so probably not more than 150. I would suppose. About two years, you know. I'd take a couple months off, gotcha. not be too involved, then go back and be involved a lot. And so we're probably talking about around 100 then? Yeah, probably less than 100, actually. Yeah. All right. So you gave your statement to Officer Truax, or at least you believe that's the woman's name. Um, when was the next statement that you gave? Well, then I had met with the district attorney weeks later. Did you, did you give a statement between the statement to Officer Truex and the, and the statement to the district attorney? I had written one up um, about three or four days after the incident because while things were fresh in my head, I wanted to make sure I notated as much as I could remember. So one evening at the web squad, I went in and opened a Word document and I wrote up a document with every detail that I could remember while it was fresh in my head. So that it was prepared for the district attorney to submit when the time came. To add, so when you did this four days later, did you already know you were going to be meeting with the district attorney? At the time, I, I knew I would be at some point, yeah. Well. I mean, I, there was no set uh, appointment date or time. Had, had you met um, Ms. Bluth or Mr. Stevens yet at that point? Did you turn this? Sorry, over? was there an answer? Oh, I'm sorry. The he answer said was no. no. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, did you turn the statement over to Detective Tomiano at that point? I'm not sure if I gave it to Detective Tomiano or just Jacqueline Booth, but I know I, I had given it to Jacqueline Booth. And that might have been a couple weeks later when we had met. Well, a couple when, weeks. when did you meet? A couple weeks after the incident. About three, about 20 days or so? I, I don't have the exact date. I could look it up and, and figure it out. Do, does it seem like it was about two, three weeks? Yeah. Thank you. In the, in the interim between, probably much closer to speaking with Officer Truax, did you speak with a gentleman named Detective Tomiano? Yes. All right. How long in time was that after your after your statement, if you will, to Officer Truax? 
Well, Truex was the, the morning of that incident, right? So um, about three or four days later is when I wrote up my statement, and then the other officer was weeks later. Did you talk with Detective Tomiano after you talked <coughs> with Ms. Bluth? He came by, or one of his partners came by to swab the inside of my cheek at my office after I met with Jacqueline Bluth once, but that was really the extent of it. I didn't have much of a conversation. Wait up just one second. Sure. Yeah, just remember you're on the record over there, too. All right, so Tomiano was after the meeting with the district attorney. Say yes? Yes. I mean, to be honest, I, I don't exactly remember the dates of when I met with Tomiano versus Jeff and Bluth and at what engagements, but... Is it fair to say yes to the best of your ability to recall? Yeah. You didn't date your statement? You just opened a Word document and wrote it? Yeah, I just opened up a blank Word document and started writing. I noticed that you refer to Mr. Copenhaver as the defendant. Did you pick that up when you met with the district attorney? <coughs> it says it right there, defendant. I, I understand. So I that. Just, at, at, at some point, you I could call him whatever you like, but it's still the same thing. So. No, I mean, yeah. you can call him whatever you like. I was just, yeah, it just came to mind, defendant. War Machine's fine. Jonathan Copenhaver, whichever you prefer. I don't mind. It's the same. Okay. Yeah. I believe you said you haven't uh, spoken to Ms. McIndy in about two years. Yeah. Why is that? Uh, I don't know. People lose touch or maybe lose interest in one another after a while. She, she stayed with you for two weeks after she was discharged from the hospital? Yeah. Uh, you, without telling me where, but do you know where she went after that? Yes. Um, and did you keep in touch with her for a little while after that? Oh, yes. Was there anyone else present in your apartment taking care of her those two weeks, the two weeks after the hospital? No. I take it you forgave her for whatever her part was in the, the night of August 8th? Yeah. Yes. Okay. I, I know it's obvious, but we need it for the record. Sure. Um, were you ever made aware that up till about an hour before Mr. Copenhaver arrived, she had been texting him? No. Were you ever made aware that she was sending naked pictures of herself to him that evening? I was never aware of that. Showed up at 11 o'clock with salads? I showed up to her residence at 11 o'clock with salads. 11 p.m.? Yes. And um, do you recall what movie you were watching? Junction Relevance. Goes to a building you recall. Overall. I don't recall the name, but it was a scary movie. And she fell asleep on that? She fell asleep on me, on the couch. I suppose a better question was she fell, fell asleep during the movie. Yes. Okay. And you carried her upstairs, you said, at about 12.30? Well, we were upstairs. I'm I sorry, you carried her downstairs. Her downstairs. Correct. Say that house has sort of an unusual layout. Oh yeah, <laughs> extremely unusual. <It's> creepy. 
even worse now. <clears throat> How did you meet Miss Mackenday? We had a sushi. We met over a dating site. I agreed to have sushi. Well, uh, do you recall what dating site? Tinder. And how long before the date had you met her on Tinder? We met on the day of our first date on Tinder around 11 a.m., 12 a.m., and we're just communicating via messaging, and then agreed to meet for sushi that evening at 7 p.m. Um, do, do you have a friend in common named Joshua Ibarra? Sorry, who? Do you have a friend in common with, with Ms. McIndae named Joshua Ibarra? The name doesn't strike a bell. You guys hit it off pretty well on June 7th? Yeah. It wasn't really long after that that I believe you said um, Ms. McIndae referred to you in something as her boyfriend? That would have been uh, on a text message. She sent me a screenshot of her texting to her girlfriend on July 20th. So it was just about a month then, a week or two after. And I was in San Francisco at the time on a, on a Monday, Sunday night, and she had already just returned home to Vegas from the that, weekend in San Francisco. Okay, that was the San Francisco trip. Yeah. Okay. All right, thank you. The, um, you, you said that you always texted sort of proper English, correct grammar, all sorts of things like that. She corrected your grammar? Yeah, I've got uh, I have a history in my text message where it shows me spelling something incorrectly and she replies with just the correct spelling of it. And inside joke. No, it's... I get it. Um, what? Uh, <clears throat> so when you saw the the text on the early morning hours of August eighth that said, "Are you not A R E Y A U?" with the letter R space the letter U, that caused you to believe it wasn't Ms. McIndae? Yes. You're in the computer industry. You're familiar with something called lol speak? Of course. Could you just briefly describe what that is? Where you abbreviate words and use letters instead of words. And did Ms. McIndae communicate with you at all in this way? In the two months that we had text communications going back and forth, there would be a little bit mixed usage of like LOL. But anytime it was okay, are you okay, it was always spelt out. Okay was even sometimes said okay, okay a y you know, really spelled out. So, just the letter K or the letter R, the letter U, that was just weird, off. Doesn't make sense. Would she replace the end of words that had an S with a, with a Z? I don't know. I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't recall that actually ever happening. Would she ever, for example, um, instead of I have H-A-V-E, would she say like I has H-A-Z? Yeah, she'd use some slang words sometimes that would be a little more slangy okay. and every, cool. Every now and again or constantly? No, every, every once in a while, not constantly. Usually with our communications, everything was pretty proper. I still have the, the iPhone here to read through it if you ever want to see it. I, I, I believe you, sir. Thank you. Sure. You went to San Francisco with her on did you say it was June 17th? I'm sorry, uh, was it June or July? It would be July. July 17th? Uh, she went on the 17th. You went on the 18th? I went a day after on the 18th. Was she working the um, the Mitchell Brothers Theater? No, she worked at the Hustlers Club as a feature dancer for their anniversary party. Um, like down on Broadway? I North Beach. Judge Jackson. Yeah. It says striking your. Okay. Or I'm sorry. So withdrawn. Okay. Thank you. 
And what do you mean by <coughs> hustler is in like clubs based on Larry Flint, the magazine? Yes, the Larry Flint Hustler Club in San Francisco. There's, I, I believe there's only one that's actually named that. He owns some others that might be named something else. And when you say feature dancer, what does that mean? It means they pay her to come in for a couple of days and they advertise that she'll be there so it makes a big draw. So fans come down with their stuff to get autographed and see her in person and, you know, so. Well, I guess what I'm asking is what type of dance is this? Jazz, tap? Oh, it's a... Uh, it's you know. <laughs> What's the relevance, Council? That's yeah, withdrawn. Okay. The, the Hustler Club is. The, oh, never mind. I'll move on. <clears throat> In your relationship with. Well, let me move back. You went to uh, Pacific Beach fairly early on in your relationship. Yeah, so we met on the 7th. The following weekend, I had, I had said, uh, hey, would you like to go to San Diego for the weekend? I'll drive, take a road trip. She said, yeah, that sounds great, let's go. And you didn't know that she was some sort of celebrity before that? No. When you were speaking during the course of that week, did she tell you what she did for a living? At our first uh, sushi date, she told me that she was in the adult industry. And I'm assuming you, you took some look, did some research on her on the internet, on her to kind of see? Actually, I didn't. I didn't care. Even after the San Diego trip? After the San Diego trip at some point, yeah, I did. All right, a little more. A little more. And when you did that, did you see her come up prominently on Google in relation to Mr. Copenhagen? No. When you search for her name, then you'll find her stuff. At any point after she told you about Mr. Copenhagen, did you do any research on him? At a point, yes. Any point before August 8th? Any point before August 8th? 2014. Yes. Okay. When was, uh, forget about when, when was that, what type of research did you do? I had seen a post from her Instagram and, and then seen his Instagram and seen a comment that he had left leaving her house on the Sunday before the incident, which would have been the 3rd of August, and uh, that's what prompted me on the, the Monday, the next day, to send her a text in the afternoon about 2 p.m. saying, hey, you know, what's, what's the deal, what's going on, and do you want to talk about this, or? Did you, so she came over to your house that night? Yes. Did you leave that conversation satisfied that you were still dating her? Yeah, I did. Did she ever use the words, I I'm no longer with, I'm no longer with him, or we're not dating, or we're not together? At our first um, meeting on the 7th, that was pretty straightforward that we haven't, we've been separated six months from my ex, is what she said. And what about on that Monday night, that would have been August 4th? Mm -hmm. She told you she wasn't with him? Yeah, she told me she was not working. You described her as a very closed emotionally person. What do you mean by that? Well, some people wear their emotions on their sleeve and tell you about how they feel about every little nook and cranny, and she's not one of them. She won't really confide in a person with her emotions easily, I, I would say. At all. Would you have been dating her? Almost exactly two months at that point? Pretty much exactly two months, if you look at the time and date. And I, I believe you testified earlier that you did almost all of the talking that evening, that Monday night? Yeah, pretty much.
I don't mean to be jumping around, but I want to go back to your fight training, uh, specifically with uh, respect to Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. Did you learn anything about chokeholds? Yes. Are you familiar with something called a, um, I'm sorry, a uh, uh, seatbelt? Um, they're in cars, but aside <laughs> from that, no. Well, in cars, seatbelts are used to restrain. Are you familiar with a, a hold called a seatbelt that's like a choke that's used to restrain someone? No, I'm not. You have been choked in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu? Mm -hmm. Ever choked Is unconscious? Pass? Yes, I've been choked in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. Ever choked unconscious? I was not choked unconscious. Uh, well, you train and you tap when you've had enough. And I thought, oh, I can muster through this and I'll, I'll get through it. But I couldn't. And I finally tapped and then hurt to swallow food for a week. So I got familiar with that, how that works. Were you ever, as part of your training in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, were you ever taught about the length of time it takes between choking someone unconscious? and choking someone to death? No. Do you have any knowledge about that as you sit here today? I couldn't tell you how, how fast you could do that or how slow it would work, no. Okay, so you met with the um, district attorney, say, two, three weeks after the incident. When was the next time you met with the district attorney? I believe the pretrial. You, you the, the, I mean the preliminary hearing? The preliminary hearing. Yeah. You discussed your testimony prior to the preliminary hearing? I just went over uh, the basics of my police report and the things that I had written. The, what you were going to be... My statement. Right. What you were going to be asked to testify about. Right. And then when was the next time you met with the district attorney? Actually, that would have been most recently... Um, two weeks ago or so? Yeah, almost two weeks ago. <clears throat> and uh, again, you went over your testimony for yeah, the same, this the same stuff. Were you given copies of, of the, the police reports that were made, the statements, uh, Detective Tomiano's report? Yes, I have a copy of the police report, my statement, and then the minutes from the hearing. Uh, when you say minutes from the hearing, you mean the transcript of the transcript. Prelim preliminary hearing? Transcript. Okay, now when you said that initially, you tapped something. There's a leather folder? Yeah, that's my binder. Okay, a leather binder up there. And you tapped that. Does that mean these documents are inside there? Yeah. Now, you, you realize coming from Ms. McIndae's house, going to your office, you drove, you drove past Sunrise Hospital. I realize that now. <clears throat> you didn't know at the time? At the time, I wasn't thinking about going to Sunrise Hospital. And I guess it appears that you resisted for a while going to the hospital. I guess you could say that, yeah. Until Ray convinced you? Well, the officer and Ray both suggested you need to be seen by a professional doctor, so. Yeah. Now, with respect to the text on, on your, it's an iPhone? Um, I have an iPhone 5 that I was communicating with Christy on. Yes. Okay, and that, those are the texts you were discussing earlier? Yes. Now, I noticed in the pictures, and I believe you said it, you did say it in your direct testimony, that you pulled it to the side so that you can see the times. Yeah, when you're looking at messages, you can put your thumb on it and you can pull out to see the times and take a screenshot. Okay. And obviously, you did that in anticipation of, of litigation of, uh, as evidence for the state. Yeah, when I wrote my statement, 
thought I'd better start collecting all of the information from my side as clear as coherent as possible now while it's all fresh. And do you, do you think, well, not do you think, do you remember whether you were text chain with uh, Ms. McIndae went all the way back to June 7th? It does. It does. At, at what point in time did you take the, to, uh, I'm now moving forward to uh, August 7th, August 8th. Uh, at, at what point in time did you take the two dogs and move them from the bed? Uh, right before sleeping. So 12.30ish? Well, we went to bed around 1, so I would say it'd be after, right about 1 time, 1 a.m. When did you carry Ms. McAday upstairs? About 1, just before 1. 